Hi, I'm Melissa Shea, President and CEO of the Long Island Real Estate Investors Association. Two decades ago, on a dare, I purchased my first home with no money down. I received $7,000 cash at the closing and earned $200 a month in passive income, all while my tenant was paying the mortgage. Since then, we've purchased over $30 million in real estate and have taught people just like you how to do the same. Go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register, and let us teach you how to become financially independent through real estate investing today. Hey guys, you're listening to Out of the Rat Race Podcast, a podcast that teaches everyday people how they could become financially independent through real estate investing. Be sure to like and follow our show so that you're kept up to date on all of our new content, which is uploaded between one and three times a week. And with that being said, let's get into today's episode. So my name is John Shea, and this is the Out of the Rat Race Podcast, Market Trends and Updates. This Wednesday, March 2nd at 7 p.m., we're having a Zoom call, Financing for Real Estate Investors. Understanding how to finance real estate deals is just as important as finding the deal itself. You can register for it right on our website, lireia.com. Also this Wednesday, Melissa will be hosting agent training and market updates for our agents at 6 p.m. through Zoom. Please contact Charlene at S H A. R-L-E-N-E at L-I-R-E-I-A dot com for the link. We're always looking for rock star agents in our office, so if you're interested in joining our brokerage at Exit Realty Every Day, please contact Charlene at 631-343-8700, extension 509, or again, you could email her, S-H-A-R-L-E-N-E at L-I-R-E-I-A dot com. On March 9th, we're having our monthly Real Estate Investor Association meeting at the Huntington Hilton in Melville with special guest Tammy from Capital City Rhea. This is all about massive cash flow profits with multifamily. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. for networking with free beer and wine from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. sponsored by Sal Rizzolo from Cardinal Financial. This event is free for our members, $29 if you register on the website, lireia.com, and $50 if you just decide to pay at the door. If you've never been to one of our events before and you want to come and try it out for free, go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register and send us a message saying you would like to attend your first meeting for free, and we will give you a one-time free event ticket. Don't forget, membership for our RIA is only $225 for the entire year, which is less than $1 a day for your education, and it has made people millions. Be on the lookout next week for a very special podcast with Melissa Shea, Charlene Blyer, and myself. It's all about loan modifications and short sales and how we're positioning ourselves to deal with this and how we could help homeowners through this very difficult time. We have agents who specialize in short sales to take this burden off of homeowners. Don't miss this podcast. And last but not least, if you haven't already joined our Real Estate Investor Association's community, please text PODCAST to 631-250-8040 and opt in. You'll be able to ask questions as well as receive updates on our upcoming events and promotions. And now let's get into some market updates. These two articles are from Redfin. This first one is from Tim Ellis of Redfin, and it's entitled, New Listings Gain Steam Met by Hardy Demand. New listings post smallest year-over-year decline since mid-November. Pending sales rise 1%. Home selling activity is finally gaining some steam. The number of homes newly listed for sale during the four weeks ending February 20th was down just 2% year-over-year, the smallest decline since mid-November. More new listings were met with hearty demand. Pending sales rose 1%, the first increase since mid-January. The market again set new record highs for home sale prices, asking prices, buyer mortgage payments, and the share of homes selling within days of hitting the market. We also saw a new all-time low for the total number of homes for sale. The good news for home buyers is that each week more homes are being listed for sale, said Redfin Deputy Chief Economist Taylor Marr. There is growing evidence that January's dramatic drop in new listings was only a temporary blip driven by heavy winter storms and the spike in COVID cases, so home buyers may have some hope for better selection in the upcoming spring season. These are some key housing market takeaways for 400 plus U.S. metro areas. 
The medium home sales price was up 15% year over year to a record high of 358750 This was up 32% from the same time in 2020. The median asking price of newly listed homes increased 15% year over year to an all-time high of 385327 This was up 27% from the same time in 2020. The monthly mortgage payment on the median asking price rose to an all-time high of $2,014. This was up 24% from a year earlier when mortgage rates were 2.97% and was up 34% from the same period in 2020 when rates were 3.45%. Pending home sales were up 0.8% year over year, the first increase since our four-week period ending January 16th. Sales were up 32% from the same period in 2020, just prior to the start of the pandemic. New listings of homes for sale were down 2% from a year earlier. This was the smallest decline since the four-week period ending November 14th. Compared to 2020, new listings were down 9%. Active listings fell 25% year over year, dropping to an all-time low of 452,000. Listings were down 49% from the same period in 2020. 58% of homes that went under contract had an accepted offer within the first two weeks on the market, an all-time high. This was up from the 51% rate of a year earlier and 43% in 2020. 45% of homes that went under contract had an accepted offer within one week of hitting the market, an all-time high. This was up from 39% during the same period a year earlier and 30% in 2020. Homes that sold were on the market for a median of 28 days, down from 37 days a year earlier and 58 days in 2020. 43% of homes sold above list price, up from 32% a year earlier and 20% in 2020. On average, 2.7% of homes for sale each week had a price drop, up 0.4 percentage points from the same time in 2021, but down 0.6 percentage points from 2020. The average sale-to-list price ratio, which measures how close homes are selling to their asking prices, rose to 100.5%. In other words, the average home sold for 0.5% above its asking price. These are some other leading indicators of home buying activity. Mortgage purchase applications decreased 10% week over week during the week ending February 18th. For the week ending February 24th, 30-year mortgage rates fell slightly to 3.89%, the highest level since May of 2019. Touring activity through February 20th was 17 percentage points ahead of 2021 and two points behind 2020 relative to the first week of January, according to the Home Tour Technology Company Showing Time. The Redfin Home Buyer Demand Index rose 6% during the week ending February 20th and was up 15% from a year earlier. The seasonally adjusted Redfin Home Buyer Demand Index is a measure of requests of home tours and other home buying services from Redfin agents. This second article is also from Redfin and is from Taylor Marr. How the Russian invasion of Ukraine could impact the U.S. housing market. Waking up to the news of the Russian invasion of Ukraine was devastating, and we were saddened to see videos of missile strikes and photos of battles igniting across the country. We want to take a moment to address how the conflict on the other side of the world could impact the U.S. housing market. The escalating conflict in Europe will make the global economy weaker, resulting in opposing pressure on mortgage rates. The Federal Reserve fighting inflation is pushing rates up while the conflict is pulling them down. Even with uncertainty and economic volatility, our most recent housing market outlook, which predicts slowing sales volumes and price growth, as well as small mortgage rate increases throughout the year, is unchanged. Financial uncertainty is slowing the rise in mortgage rates, with the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate sitting at 3.89% in the week ending February 24th. That's down slightly from the 392 peak the week before but up from roughly 3.1% at the beginning of the year. Pumping the brakes on rising mortgage rates could help home buyers by making monthly payments slightly smaller than they otherwise would have been. Global markets don't like conflict and investors don't like uncertainty, which means the financial markets are volatile and weakening. 
That impacts the housing market because many home buyers rely on selling stocks or tapping into their 401k for down payments, which is especially true as rising home prices increase the amount of cash necessary for a down payment. This will have a particularly big impact in expensive tech hubs like the Bay Area, Seattle, and Austin. Volatility in the financial markets may also erode consumer confidence around the U.S., which already fell earlier this month. Oil prices spiked 7% initially to more than $100 a barrel, and rising energy prices is one of the biggest drivers of this year's record-setting inflation. That's relevant to the housing market in several key ways. First, rising energy prices can prolong inflation, which means the Fed has more reason to fight inflation by increasing rates, which could further push up mortgage interest rates and slow home buyer demand. Second, increasing gas prices can ripple through the economy quickly. As President Biden said, defending freedom will have costs for us. Moody's analytics estimate GDP growth will be half a point lower than previous predictions in the third quarter of this year as a result of rising gas prices. That could lead to weakening job growth, limited pay raises, and Americans having less money to spend on homes. Finally, home buyer demand for commuter exurbs typically decline when oil prices spike though that effect may be less pronounced in the era of remote and hybrid work. This conflict could dampen Russian home buying in the U.S. Russia's economy is suffering in the wake of the attacks, with its stock market dropping, currency depreciating, and threats of sanctions. That could impact the desire and ability of Russian home buyers to purchase properties in the U.S. Russians have historically purchased a fair amount of property in the U.S., specifically South Florida. With the impact of Russia's attack on the Ukraine in mind, our most recent housing market outlook remains unchanged. The forecast is relatively conservative. It shows total home sales slowing to 6.6 .6 million by the end of 2022. Sale price growth slowing to 5% and continued, yet smaller increases in mortgage rates throughout the year, eventually reaching about 4.3%. Redfin reported this week that new listings of homes for sale have been growing for four consecutive weeks, which is evidence that January's shortfall in listings was temporary and buyers should soon have more to choose from. Home buyer demand remains strong this week, with pending sales rising this week for the first time since mid-January and the average home selling for 0.5% above its asking price. 58% of homes that went under contract had an accepted offer within two weeks on the market, and that's an all-time high. The National Association of Realtors reported that existing home sales jumped 6.7% in January from the month before to $6.5 million. Prices rose 15.4% year over year. Prices of newly built homes rose 13.4% from a year ago to $423,300. Affordability is a major concern for home buyers, with the typical mortgage payment up 24% from a year ago. But homes are still slightly more affordable than they were in the 2000s, when loose credit restrictions led to record home sales. Guys, once again, I'm John Shea, and that was the Out of the Rat Race podcast, Market Trends and Updates. Happy investing.